a, a perspective from an international law standpoint. I wanted to ask your views on what does this whole crisis mean for the future of the European Union? And I know, obviously, that's a broad question, hmm. but it's something that hasn't been brought up yet, and I just sure. wanted to get your, your view. You're quite right to ask it. I, 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 <coughs> if I haven't answered it, it's because I have, much like I would appreciate any American who has Trump on Nui, uh, uh, I have... Um, I have Brexit tiredness. It's, it's very hard to go to a dinner party, coffee shop, pub, anything else without the conversation being about Brexit, and I refuse to engage in it any more than is absolutely necessary. I think, by the way, to speak to the, the central issue I was talking about tonight, um, I, I'm fairly sure that Brexit wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for Angela Merkel. I think Angela Merkel caused Brexit. I think a lot of people, myself included, who I voted for uh, Brexit, um, felt that if the European Union could be led so single-handedly, so unilaterally, so without care for asking your allies among the other member states, just rampaging over your allies' concerns, that th if you could behave this irrationally, then it was not worth being a part of. And I'm fairly sure that, that as I say, Angela Merkel's actions propelled that. Um, now, the situation we're in is we are, um, there was a terrific gif online of a man who's drunk on the London Underground, jumping off the elevator, jumping off the escalator to slide down, but then hitting between his legs a sign and like flying off the other one, which is going up and then falling down and splatting on the floor. And it was sent around with hashtag Brexit. Um, because we have had a terrible, uh, terrible 15 months or whatever of shooting ourselves in, a, in every foot we can find. Um, and um, it's, so it's a very strange period. And, and again, I mean, I wouldn't like to hesitate to guess where it's going to go. I would just say that there are very odd, uh, I mentioned being in Hungary again recently, there are very odd things. Uh, uh, the Hungarian public are very pro-EU, about 75% pro-EU. Only about 20-25% of the Hungarian public would vote to leave the EU. But they are 75% opposed to the EU's migration policies. So there's a set of situations like that where you see two things that are going to keep bashing against each other. And you think, which will, which will win in that? And I don't know. I mean, it could be they continue to think, well, our free movement and our economic gain for the time being from the EU is worth this constant bullying from Brussels. But, um, I mean, it's very, I, from an American point of view, a lot of what happens in the EU is hard to follow because it, it's, I mean, my own belief was that it was a relationship that Britain never wanted to be in. And uh, we are in the situation of a divorced couple where we are going to have a nasty period of, working out who owns which CDs. <laughs> and uh, we might go off with some that don't belong to us, but in the end, we'll be on the open market again with all the joys that can bring. 